Congratulations to Kartoa for winning the first major parallel tournament. Truly historic. Congratulations are also due to the Echelon team, the parallel team, and everybody that helped put together this epic event. I especially want to shout out Muka, Kawa, Orphan, and Rai, uh, who all did an amazing job streaming and casting the tournament. I'll admit I am not much of a twi Twitch user, uh, but I found myself watching a ton. Uh, really, really impressive work all the way around. Uh, being able to see both players' hands was a lot of fun. The commentary was great. Hilarious jokes from Orin, Orphan and Ryan uh, in between matches. Uh, this was a cool setup uh, and honestly just made me jealous that I was not a part of it. Uh, so hopefully sometime in the future because it was very, very cool. Uh, the tournament attracted a ton of attention, featured lots of high-level games, and was a really cool reward for Ardens uh, that have been supporting this project since day one. And yeah, there was a little bit of controversy, which we'll get to in a moment, but uh, that should not detract from what was, I think, one of the most successful and well-executed events in all of Web3 to date. Kartoa took home the title with an impressive array of gameplay and preparation. Yes, the field was a little bit limited, but there were still many, many really, really great players, so this was not an easy win. Let's take a look at how he did it. Well, round one was a true challenge for literally everybody. It was a full week of qualifying with no limits to the number of games that you could play. That meant that it was going to be a very serious grind just to qualify for the bracket phase. In the end, hundreds of players logged hundreds of games, and Echelon used their own ranking system outside of the game's MMR to put some extra value on things like win rate and consistency. Uh, definitely appreciated. I think it worked, at least to a degree. Uh, in the end, nobody qualified with less than like 150 games played, uh, and most uh, were logging something like 200 to 250 games. That is a ton just to qualify. Uh, amongst those players, Carteau was on the very short list uh, of players with a win rate over 70% during the qualifying round. Now, I can tell you, I entered the tournament myself uh, despite knowing that it was going to be a real grind, uh, I still wanted to experience it personally. In the end, there really was too many grinders for me to keep pace, but uh, it was still fun to test my decks out against the competition anyways. One thing that was very, very clear was that everybody was going to be running Juggernaut Workshop, uh, that that would basically be a requirement to win the tournament. And the most common Marconian builds during the qualifying phase seemed to really be struggling, especially when they had to go second against Workshop. The reason for this was because uh, about a month, month and a half ago, Parallel nerfed a card called Orbital Strike. Uh, and when that happened, pretty much everybody took it out of their Marcoli Index. But it is the key card that makes finishing games against tough matchups like Workshop or really any Earthen matchup, uh, especially when you're going second, much, much simpler. Success with Marcolian means being aggressive. And I watched a lot of the tournament, so I can confidently say that Kartoa brought the most aggressive Marcolian deck in the bracket. He was able to catch workshops by surprise, winning that matchup, uh, and saving his own workshop deck uh, for a later game. In fact, this is exactly how he knocked off Brazy in the semifinals, and Brazy is arguably the best player in the game, uh, certainly one of the toughest. Uh, so that matchup and that deck preparation absolutely worked for Kartoa. In my opinion, it was clearly the best Marcolian deck in the entire tournament, and that is the reason why he won it all. In, in fact, we could simplify it down to Orbital Strike was the Marcolian win condition required for this tournament, uh, and he seemed to be the only one playing it. To the Echelon Foundation, who I know is planning on hosting many more tournaments, some feedback for improvement. I think that a qualifying round is a great way to start things off. It's certainly much better than a huge single elimination bracket. But with no limits on the number of qualifying games allowed to be played, folks like myself can't truly compete. Now, I actually love to grind, but I have a busy life and simply couldn't keep pace. Uh, I'm sure that there were several other Ardens on the list that were in a similar boat. 
this is an easy adjustment to make and something like a limit of maybe 10 games per day uh, would go a long way much much healthier for the players uh, as well uh, since i don't think eight hours of grinding is a very healthy way to approach things uh, and the second one is not really a specific request but i'd love to see some more experimentation with deck limits and rules. I think that the two deck setup that was used in this tournament worked out really well, uh, but it did result in what seemed like kind of a lot of mirror matches. And in my opinion, those are a bit less interesting to watch, a bit less interesting to play as well. That might simply have been uh, the dominance of Juggernaut Workshop and Lemieux in the current meta, uh, but I think that having more deck choices uh, would ease that up a little bit. And now for the controversy, because I, I think I have to address it. Uh, I want to start by saying I think this is mostly a non-issue at this point. Uh, a decision was made, the tournament is over, and in the end, a true ardent won. But there's still some room for improvement. So let's start with what actually happened. As I mentioned at the top, this tournament was designed to be a reward for early supporters. Only people on the Ardent list were allowed to enter. The majority of the prize pool was actually coming from the Echelon Foundation itself and not the tournament buy-in. So being able to buy in for very cheap was real and true value that Echelon delivered to the Ardent list members. However, the Ardent list itself is actually a list of wallets and not a list of users. Uh, in the parallel ecosystem, wallets are linked to a player account, but playing the game itself was not actually a requirement to make that particular list. So any wallet that was used to purchase parallel NFTs in the past, but never actually played the game, was still on the list and technically qualified for the tournament. And in Web3, it's very common and normal for a single user to have multiple wallets. In fact, I highly recommend that you use multiple wallets for various uses uh, when you're doing anything on the blockchain. So it was pretty common for players to have multiple entries into this tournament. However, one player uh, who has purchased quite a lot of parallel stuff in the past uh, noticed they had a wallet that was on the list that wasn't associated with an account yet. So he used that wallet to register another player who was now qualified for the tournament. And best I can tell, he cleared all of this up front. Uh, at, at very minimum, I can tell you for sure, he had announced in advance the players that were participating uh, for his bond, which is kind of like a guild uh, or a team. The player chosen uh, is a player named Ivan, who happens to be a Magic the Gathering professional player. And that is not actually the problem. It doesn't matter that Ivan happens to be really, really good at card games. Uh, the problem is Ivan was not on the Ardent list. Uh, he hasn't been supporting Parallel from the beginning. It's not one of the OGs that was meant to be rewarded with this tournament. Instead, he was allowed in on what, what is essentially a technicality. Uh, there was no specific rule broken, uh, but the, the spirit of this competition, the intention of this tournament uh, definitely was not followed. The person whose wallet was being shared absolutely is a longtime Parallels uh, supporter, uh, but the problem is he was already participating in the tournament on his own account, and this essentially gave a second entry uh, that nobody else was allowed to get. Many other players had multiple wallets on the list, though, and could have done something similar. However, because the intentions here were clear, nobody even asked about that possibility. And unfortunately, it didn't come to light until another player uh, in the bracket round refused to play against Ivan uh, in protest. Now, at the end of the day, Echelon Foundation was running the tournament, and they get to make their own decision. Uh, I think that they made the wrong decision in this particular case, uh, but in the end, they refunded everybody's entry fee of 11 prime, and they promised to be uh, more open in the future. If that's the case, everything is all good in my opinion. With that said though, we need to unban win condition. Win condition is the player who protested and perhaps he could have handled things a little bit more professionally, but in the end, uh, I don't blame him for being upset uh, and he's an upstanding member of the parallel community, deserves to be welcomed back. 
And as a quick side note, I hold no ill will towards anybody that was involved in what happened here. Uh, I don't think that this is a story that has a villain. Uh, and from what I can see, Ivan especially did not do anything wrong. He was allowed to play. He played all of his games. He played fantastic, and that's why he ended up in fourth place and gets a nice prize. Uh, I think it's very cool that Ivan is in the parallel uh, and that I hope uh, a lot more professionals like him uh, join us in the future as well.